Will Work for Patients, Episode 33. So when you come up against the challenge of finding someone to help you expand that practice, you need to know that that person is on the same page as you. And that becomes a challenge in and of itself. Hey out there, Will Workers. I'm back with a killer episode. Today, my special guest is an absolute expert in hiring associates, something that has baffled you for the longest time. And we're going to take that up. Yes, I'm going there. So stay tuned for my special guest. Episode 33 is Hiring Killer Associates. Episode 33 coming at you. Here we go. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Will Work for Patients, a free advice podcast dedicated to help chiropractors get on purpose and grow their practices. Get ready to tune in and turn up the volume of your practice marketing. And now, turning up the volume on his mic, big-time chiropractic advocate and your host, here is Frank Sardella. Hey, that's me, your humble host, Frank Sardella, right here for you. Will work for patients, folks. I'm so glad you made it back for another episode. We've been talking about CAs, and now I'm really getting into it. I told you in the episode intro that I went there and I did go there because you are going to be really, really excited for today's guest. And you're finally going to get some information on what's going on in the hiring scene when it comes to getting associates. I know I listen to you. I listen to what you say. I hear your questions. I feel your pain. So what I want to do is cover that in great detail. And now I want to introduce to you my very special guest who's going to help us out with that. Today's guest is the owner of Cairo Cover Inc., They are placement brokers for chiropractors seeking temporary coverage or permanent associate placement. And she's an absolute expert at doing this. She's been 18 years in the business. So you know she knows a thing or two about what she's doing. Currently, she provides service for doctors in the Northeastern U.S., but no matter if you're not in the Northeast, because you're going to learn a lot today about this. And she probably has the best reputation, in my estimation, of any organization of its kind. To be honest with you, I don't even know any other organizations that do this. This has been a close personal friend of mine for years, and I absolutely consider her an expert. As a matter of fact, you guys hear me tout Kathy Mills Chang all the time and her level of expertise. My guest today is in that class, in that grade. So listen up, tune in, make sure you're not distracted because you're not going to want to miss a note of this. So please join me in welcoming my guest today, Fran Fiella. Fran, say hello to Will Work for Patients. Hello. How are you, Fran? Uh, I am excited, Fran. I am elated. I usually stand on my chair when I get excited. Right now, I'm just pacing the floor, but I may stand on my chair. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. (laughs) Good. And I I know you've been a little excited, too, about getting on the show, and uh, I knew it would be a fun episode. So let's get right into it. But I gave you a little bit of an intro, and of course, I always gush over my favorite guests, but maybe you can fill us in on a little extra or maybe some pieces that I didn't hit on about who you are, who Fran Fiala Mm -hmm. is, and how she's become the expert that she has at getting associates placed either temporarily or permanently in practices. I'll be happy to. Cover Cover has been around a very long time, and when it first started out, the main thing we did was coverage. A doctor was going away on a holiday, and he needed somebody to treat his patients, so he kept his doors open, etc. And that was probably everything that we did. And mm-hmm. little by little, as I spoke with my clients and listening to them talk about difficulties they had with finding good associates, keeping good associates, et cetera, we expanded into including that as part of the services that we offer. Now, one of the things that I know is as part of what we do, we're very close to our clients. We know them. We know what their practice is like, how they run it. We know the wife had a baby last week. So Mm -hmm. we have a very close relationship with the doctors that we work with, and that expands all the time. Honestly, there's no two chiropractic practices that are the same. That's just the bottom line. Each doctor is an individual. He brings his own je ne sais quoi. To the, to the practice, his own personality. Patients mm-hmm. come to him or her because it's him or her. And as many different styles of chiropractic there are out there, that's how many types of doctors there are. So when you come up against the challenge of finding someone to help you expand that practice, you need to know that that person is on the same page as you. And that becomes a challenge in and of itself. So what we do is we take the burden of that off of our clients because it is a burden to collect dozens of resumes, 
arrange interviews, all that good stuff, and try and find the needle in the haystack. So we do it for them, and we do it pretty well. And I agree you do it pretty well because I've seen it firsthand. I've seen you providing the coverage, and I've also seen you service the clients. And I want to make a comment on this as well. And when you talk about personalized service, true or false, Fran, very oftentimes they get Fran Faella herself on the phone dealing with that. Pretty much. That's yeah. one of the things that I like about it. You're not, you're not too big for your britches over there. You uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, really okay. like talking to the doctors. Well, I've heard you talking to the doctors. I've been to your office before. I hear you. And yeah. I, I can tell like the, you know, the fondness there and, and so on. And what do you think of being in the chiropractic industry and helping chiropractors for a living? What's that done for you for the last 18 years? You know, I got to say that I love it. I love it to death, quite frankly. My, my husband, who's also co-owner of the company with me, is a chiropractor. Mm. He introduced mm. me to it 30 years ago when we, you know, first started going out. And um, when we took over ChiroCover, it was kind of like we use the term walk the walk and talk the talk, you know. Cause <laughs> it, yeah, but, you know, chiropractic saved my life. I, I believe in it very strongly. I, I honor and respect the fact that it is a highly coveted profession quite frankly, not given the kudos that it deserves. But it's a, a healthcare alternative that's for none. That's all Absolutely. I, say. I love it. Ab- yeah. Absolutely. You're preaching to the choir, Fran. We have that in common. Okay. And uh, listeners, that's exactly why I have Fran on the show. You may think it's just because she's expert in an area that you want to hear about, but it's really because she and I share the same background, the same miracle. And this is the kind of stuff that we want to put into it. I mean, imagine putting that kind of purpose into hiring an associate and we're bringing that synergy to the table here. And Fran, I just want to point out the Cairo Cover slogan is my favorite, absolute favorite thing. <laughs> Care for the patient, really Relief for the doctor. I mean, that yeah. just says it all right there. Absolutely. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, good. We're going to give our doctors some relief today, I think, um, <laughs> in, in, in the fullest sense of the word, because this is an area, you and me, Fran, we're going to get into it today, and we're going to talk about an area that I hear all the time. And when I said it in the episode intro that I listen to them, I, I listen to their questions, I hear every word that they say, I really, really do. And I speak to so many of these doctors, as do you. You, you tend to hear trends in, in what they're talking about. And I know you being in this business, you know that today's topic is a hot topic with these guys. Otherwise, they wouldn't be calling you if they didn't need the help. And um, That's right. Unfortunately, we can't have you everywhere all over the world, so not everybody can benefit from the service of ChiroCover. So I figure let's get into the nitty gritty today of like what we're looking for and any kind of advice that we can give these guys that's going to help them really get the right associate in there. So if you don't mind, I'm going to jump right in. What I want to know is what what do you, Fran Faella, somebody who places associates both permanently and for temporary coverage, what do you look for in an associate doctor? I look for what the client wants. I'm a pretty good judge of character to begin with. Mm -hmm. When a a potential candidate comes to me that's looking for either temporary work or to be placed as a permanent associate, I'm doing an interview with them, and I'm getting the feel for who this person is in addition to their knowledge of techniques, where they went to school, et cetera. So I know by the personality who they're going to work with and who they're not. And I guess that's kind of a sixth sense. You know, I can't say that there's some standard technique to how to do that, but... Yeah, it gives me an idea of what they're yeah. looking for. Now, okay. when I'm talking to my client, I'm doing a similar thing. I'm asking the client, what's their practice like? Is it a PI practice? Is it family-based? Are they treating pregnant moms and kids or elderly or is it workers' comp? All these varieties. And that gives me an idea of who the client is. So then when it's time for me to be the matchmaker, I can look at who my doctors are and who the clients are and say, oh, okay, this guy will work with him. And usually, That's a great point. Yeah, usually I'm right. Not to toot my own horn, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And actually, I want to I point something out. Um, in, the, in the pre-show interview we did about a week ago, you mentioned mm-hmm. something in this area that really resonated with me, and I'm hoping you can expound on it for mm-hmm. our listeners, that you say, okay, it's a sixth sense with you, but what you're really doing is you're looking at who the doctor is himself. And when I say the doctor, I mean the practice owner, the governor of where that practice is going. And I think yeah. this is something that may be skipped over, that doctors, when they're seeking associates, don't really delineate who they are, 
what they do, what they're about, what their techniques are, what specifics that really make them who they are and that practice of reflection of who they are and don't consider that in selecting an associate. So yeah. can you comment on that? You had a, a few really great things to say about it, and I would love to share that with everybody. Okay, so you've got a guy who has gone into practice. He's worked the dickens out of it to build it and make it something viable and wonderful for himself, his family, etc. right? And now he's gotten to make break point where he has to bring in another doctor, otherwise he's just going to rip his shoulders apart or something, you know? He's got to expand. So mm -hmm. if he is objective enough about himself and what he's created to be able to say, okay, I'm the kind of guy who likes X, then he can communicate that to me and I can locate X. If not, they're going, well, you know, I want the perfect guy who knows how to do this technique and he'll build this and he'll do that, and et cetera, et cetera. The criteria is not realistic. And he needs to create a more realistic view of himself and what he's built so that he can open the door to somebody walking in and assuming that extended role of being another him, which is yes. not always possible, you know. And that's really what most guys want usually. They want another doctor that's going to be a clone of them. And it's not realistic. It's not going to happen. But what they okay. can do is find someone who matches the personality of the practice, of what's been created there. So you have a family-based practice. You treat families and kids and grandmas and stuff like that. You're not going to bring in a guy that has spent his entire chiropractic career in a PI practice. You're just not going to do that because it doesn't mesh. So yeah. that's one thing, for instance, you know, but the, the owner of the practice has to know who he is and what kind of practice he's created there so that when he does expand with an additional associate or two, it's just a further expression of what he's already created and it will work. That's now, when I'm in the process of placing someone in a scene like that, like I said earlier, I've done a very extensive interview with the client and I can get a feel what he's looking for and then send him the person that I know is going to fit. And he might right. even say to me, no, 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 I don't want a female. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> right. <laughs> but I know it's going to work. And sure enough, if they give it a chance, you know, I, I've placed hundreds and hundreds of associates over the past 18 years. And pretty much I would say about 80 to 90 percent of them have stuck. And it, it worked into a very nice marriage, if you will. Mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. Yeah. I can imagine hundreds of associates, you know, you have to learn a lesson. And listeners, I just want to say that I'm constantly preaching about having done something over and over. And it's a little tough in the area of associates. I mean, someone like Fran here is running a company full time that places associates. So she has that ability to do it over and over and you don't. So for instance, when I'm coaching on the proper way to do a screening or how to get somebody signed up or how to get someone to show up, my biggest recommendation I make in my coaching is to do it over and over and over and here's an area where you don't really get a chance to do it and when you are doing it over and over and over it's a bad thing because it means you haven't been placing right so that's where someone like Fran comes in either to do the service for you or like in this forum you know giving some advice so there's something to be said about that and Fran I really want to also point out to our listeners um, I really think it's brilliant that whole commentary you just made but mainly on describing to yourself who you are. And this reflects episode 31, where I had my wife, Monica, on, who's an expert in training CAs. And Monica is very much into, before you place your first ad to get someone to really decide on who that person has to be down to the last detail and what the job mm -hmm. duties are down to the last detail, so that when you delineate that, you've actually really named out the fullness of the position and it really assists in getting the right person into it. And maybe you can't get the perfect person, but you can get really close. And Fran, thanks for being real with our listeners too, because I think that's an interesting point that you make that, you know, you, you got to be a little bit realistic that you might not find that clone in your area. 
Maybe if uh -huh. you're in New York City and you've got like choices galore, but if you're in the backwoods somewhere and there's very limited choices, you may have to, you know, muddle through. But that makes it even more important to decide exactly who you need and want there to write down the last personality. So thanks for that, Fran. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Another yeah. problem that we get in this area is that and maybe you can comment on this, and maybe it's a reflection of not really delineating that exact person. But I, one of the biggest complaints I hear from doctors who hire associates is that they have associates who come in and they don't exactly you know, maybe they come in on the premise that they also have to bring patients in and then they come in and they sort of lazily just adjust people and don't confront doing that. But then also that when they invest in training and things like that, that the associate has a sense of entitlement. I was just wondering if you had any comments mm -hmm. on that subject since it's such a hot topic and I'm sure you've come across yeah. it maybe at least once in your 18 years. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, a you little. know, it is a very volatile and touchy subject. Usually what I tell my clients is don't hire immediately. Interview the person, yes, get a feel for them, but then how do come in and do coverage? See how they work. What is their work ethic? Are they the go-getters that you're hoping they're going to be, or are they the, you know, the lazy dude that's going to sit in the back watching video games, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it has happened. So it, it is Proving ground. Thank you. Yes, proving ground. It's like, okay, you know, so you're giving the guy a shot. He's getting some coverage work to do. Good. But you're also getting to see them. There's so much training out there to show a person how to do a good interview that it has happened occasionally that they can get away with looking like God's gift to chiropractic when, <laughs> in fact, they're not. They're lazy or, or whatever. But putting them into the coverage environment now they have to perform. Now you get to see who the real doctor so-and-so is. Now, with regard to agreements and why you're going to bring in patients for the practice, that is determined by the two people involved, the hiring doctor and the candidate. A lot's involved in those agreements. What are you willing to do? What can you have? The so client says, okay, yeah, this is what I want. I want a guy who's going to help me expand the practice. He's going to go out and do screenings and health affairs and all that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. maybe the guy is a, he's a great chiropractor, fabulous adjuster, great bedside manner. He doesn't want to have anything to do with marketing. Okay, right. well, again, the client has to look at his criteria. What is it that he wants? Because you could have the perfect chiropractor, but if he doesn't bring in a new patient and that's what you need, he's the wrong candidate to hire. He's great for coverage. Okay, good. <laughs> that's right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so those negotiations are very important, but I recommend that they come after the guy's done some coverage for a couple of weeks or whatever, that the client can see who that real person is, not just his technical skill. And then you move Fantastic. forward. Pure gold. Listeners, pure gold, what Fran's <laughs> talking about here. Volatile and touchy. I, I love those adjectives. I, I really think that summates like how this whole sticky area really is for these practice owners and you know, their quest to find the right associate or any associate <laughs> to produce any sort of product, much less the ideal one. So volatile and touchy yeah. are the words of the day. Um, and having them do coverage and observing their work ethic, that is just brilliant and pure gold. Folks, Getting that associate in there and having them try the position. I mean, how many times have you applied this with CAs? Monica even talked about it in her episode on hiring CAs that she puts them through a third interview process where they do a working interview and she sees if they can do the job and, and the CA themselves see if they can do the job. And Fran, I think you make an important point there because the, the associate also is getting a chance to try out the job. How many times do we get deep into a relationship and six to eight months into it, it's a nightmare and the associate hates the practice owner and or vice versa. And you've already been entrenched in it so long, you've already given up advertising and interviewing. So you got to start that whole cycle again. And it's like this uh -huh. never ending pit of despair. So I, I yeah. think that's fantastic. And then the negotiations coming after they do some coverage and prove themselves on the proving ground. And what a great segue, because that really segues me into what I want to know next. <laughs> there is a delicacy here in making agreements with the associates as to duties, uh, salary, their future with the practice, maybe like practice buyout options and, and mm -hmm. different things like that. You've done a lot of permanent placement over the years. So, mm -hmm. you know, could you comment a little bit on that? 
about it, but not just about the delicacy and what you've seen, but maybe some guidance in that area. It's very difficult to navigate. Wow, there's so much to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like when a chiropractor is building his practice and he gets to the point where he's outgrown the space that he bought or rented or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's not going to run up the street and just grab the next largest space, you know, because it's there or whatever. He's going to do his research and he's going to check out the real estate and he's going to make sure that the new location he goes to is going to assist him in his practice expansion. It's a similar thing when you're hiring an associate. It is a long-term commitment. At least it should be. You don't want a revolving door of associates every other month. That's just, it's a nightmare for you as well as your patient. So yes. it is something that you have to plan out. It's like, okay, when I reach 300 patient visits a week, I am going to start hiring an associate. Okay, good. What does that associate have to bring to the table? Well, I want him to be able to do marketing, have a good bedside manner. This is your wish list. And when you begin the interview process, you keep that wish list in mind until you find the guy that you think is going to work and you have him do some coverage, see how he does work, et cetera. And if you then come to that point of saying, yes, I think I'm ready to sign the rental agreement for the new space kind of thing with this guy, that's when you sit down and you start to hammer out the nuts and bolts of, okay, this is what I want from you. Can you do it? Well, I'd like to bring you on. Let's come to an agreement as to your starting salary and benefits, et cetera, et cetera. Every yes. step of the way is, is a testing ground for both of you. So the client mm -hmm. needs to be just as flexible as the candidate, too. The, yeah. I've seen nightmare associate placements where the hiring doctor has such high expectancy that nobody could match them. And they did have the revolving door of associates coming through, and it became a nightmare. You want to take your time with this because it is a very important point of the expansion of your practice. You, you yeah. don't want to lose patience over it either. So it's something you want to give your time to. So key and so important. And the high expectancy, I think that's a great point that you raised there because it's almost like you could create a formula, like a proportion. Like you could say, the more unreasonable the expectancy demands yeah. and things that you could never expect out of somebody. And I have seen that too. So word on that. And then um, as far as the long-term commitment and planning it out, I, I'm in 100% agreement with you. What do you think though, because this is an interesting area and I always go based on the questions that I get. I mean, this happens with CAs. You know, I get it all the time with CAs. What do I pay my CA? What do I pay my CA? But I also get mm -hmm. the associate question. What do I pay my associate? Like, what have you seen since you're dealing with these people all the time in associates who seek placement or who are seeking to work for another doc? Like what some of their demands or needs and wants are that you've observed in general? Um, unfortunately, I've seen the pendulum swing both ways. Where <laughs> I bet. Associates were paid next to nothing, barely able to uh, make a living and worked like the devil, or mm -hmm. paid so much and not given a commensurate amount of work to go with it. So there is a sure. happy medium that has to be brought to the table as well. There are certain market ceilings of what's expected, et cetera, et cetera, you know, based on the cost of living and all that. It's mm -hmm. kind of hard to say, well, this is your, your magic number. It's, right. It's more of what is the value of this person to your clinic? Is he going to raise the statistics? Are patients going to love him so much that you are freed up to go out and do more marketing and bring in twice as many patients? And, of course, the associate that's in the negotiating process with you has his own number in mind. So you come to a balanced agreement of, of what's going to work. You know? Right. Yeah, I see yeah. that. And I think that ties back into the advanced planning thing, because I like what you said, especially, and listeners, I think you should really pay attention to this point. What is this associate's value going to be to the practice? What are they going to fulfill? How much patient load are they going to take on? What are those visits worth? How many visits a week load are they going to take? How many new patients are they expected to bring in and how much money are they worth versus, you know, now the ratio of what a commensurate salary would be to pay them, to satisfy them and keep them motivated yet to get some ROI. 
And I think really, Fran, probably the advanced planning that you're recommending really is all part of that, isn't it? I mean, all those calculations should come before you put ad number one out for the associate. I have a client right now that Mm -hmm. we've been working together for two months now, and I've sent him a few candidates that he's looking to to place the right associate, right? Mm -hmm. And he took my advice, and he had coverage scenarios with each of these candidates. One of them, they loved him, they thought he was great, but the guy lasted about a month, and then he was burnt out. He's like, I can't take it. You (laughs) You know, he just walked, and God forbid my client had hired him it would have been a nightmare, you know. Exactly. Now I have another guy in there who is working out. He's much more flexible and willing to learn, et cetera, et cetera, with the, the training process that the client is putting into motion. And this is looking like it's working out. And the personalities match as well. Wow. So, So all in all, I'm looking at it and saying, okay, this might be the marriage. But even I'm hesitant and, and just waiting to see, okay, what's going to happen? How's it going to work? I take time with these. You know, this is an important move for a client. And my reputation's at stake, too, here. I don't want to place a guy, and then two months later, he's calling me up saying, you know, the guy just walked and took half my patients with me. You know? Yeah. <laughs> We've yeah, all heard that one before, cool. too. A little right. too much. Yeah, not cool. So all not these cool. things come into play. I agree wholeheartedly. Hey, tell me something. What, what's the biggest nightmare placement, why, whether from you or just story from the doctor that you've ever heard of or seen? Is there a nightmare one that sticks out in your mind? Yeah, there is. <laughs> it, it, does, it, it does go back again to that concept of the revolving door of, of uh, associates. Basically, is just the client did not have a realistic view of his criteria. He expected that the associate doctor was going to be another one of him. And when that person did not match up on any level, you know, whether it was on their adjusting techniques or how the patients liked them or whatever, it was higher fire, higher fire, higher fire. Mm, and then, yeah. yeah, it becomes a nightmare for someone like me too, because I'm trying to work also with candidates to give them a happy home to be in for the next 5, 10, 20 years. Mm-hmm. Great point. Yeah. Listeners, I, I just want to point out too, you know, how many of you have told me your nightmare stories about associates or have griped ad nauseum about the, the associate <laughs> you currently have or whatever? And have you ever sat down and introverted a little bit? Not not a lot. And I'm not saying don't take this like I'm saying it's all on you. But, you know, it's very interesting that when you're having that revolving door, sometimes it's like, OK, maybe it's not everybody else. Maybe I'm also doing something to create that revolving door. And I think what the point Fran's making here is there's a little bit of responsibility on the part of the practice owner, too, to really be able to clearly define the position, clearly define what they're looking for, test out the associates before they put them into the job. Don't make any rash decisions. You know, you hear that thing going around, everybody says hire slow, fire fast or something like that. I don't necessarily subscribe to that, but there is some interpretation of hire slow that isn't too bad of a scenario. If you interpret it such that, hey, I'm going to take my time and define things and then test people out before I actually hire them. Because you can have somebody covering for you Right, Fran, for a little while, for quite a little while, even a couple of months, and to have it just be a trial period. Yeah. Yeah. And they could be so, they could be getting trained in the process, et cetera, but okay. there's no promises made. So, Fran, tell me something. I'm going to ask you one more question. What is the match made in heaven that you've seen in your last 18 years? Who sticks out as the best placement, the best matchup between doctor and associate? Could you tell us a little bit about that placement? Yeah, it stands out very clearly, actually. It was a client came to me, he had a practice, and he basically wanted to step away from it and bring in an associate that was going to take it over, not in terms of ownership, but in terms of the responsibility of running the show, treating the patients, getting the paperwork to the insurance companies, et cetera, et cetera. And I set him up with a candidate that I just felt their personalities, they could be brothers. The candidate went in. He did a few weeks of coverage. Two of them came to an agreement, and he was hired. And he probably worked as an associate side-by-side side with the client for about a year, being fully trained, etc., before the client stepped away from the practice. And that was in 2005. That was 11 years ago. That doctor is still there. 
Wow. The, and that associate now runs the practice. He now calls me for coverage. <laughs> you know, <laughs> as a new client kind of thing. But worked out to be an extraordinarily good match. It really was the, the match made in heaven. And that's kind of the criteria oh, wow. that I go by. I want them all to be like them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And and yeah. so, so it's not just an urban legend. It's not just a fairy tale. It actually can happen. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I can't think of a better high note to end this interview on because, wow. And in fact, even myself, Fran, I'm, I'm, I find myself elated right now just hearing that story because I hear so many of the negatives every day and I don't hear mm-hmm. too much positive about this area, which is, again, why I wanted to have you on the show, because I wanted you to just beam all of your great experience on our listeners and let them know that there's some hope. And, you know, I want to point something out. Fran is in the full time business of doing this and she's referred to this business as volatile, touchy. So cut yourself some slack on the fact that, listen, if it's somebody who's a professional at this finds it a little touchy and volatile, then it's going to take you a little more, especially since hiring is less than 15% of what you do in your practice. Mm -hmm. What you do as a chiropractor is only about 15% of what it takes to run that practice. Hiring is an even less percentage, but what an important one. So Fran, Thanks so much for that. I mean, I can't tell you just in the brief answers you gave today, how much structure I think you gave everybody. And I think a lot of people are going to take away a lot of stuff. I'm so glad. Yeah. Yeah. I want that's help, awesome. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know you do. Mm-hmm. I know you do. And, you, and you're doing a fantastic job. And I really think that it shows in the service you deliver. I've heard, I know some of my clients are your clients and I've heard the raves about you and so on um, and what you do. I've seen the inside of your business. So just, you know, I'd like to commend you about the, the work that you're doing. And thanks so much for the inspiration today. Wow. Thank you. All right. Now for the last word. Who gets the last word? I do. After all, it's my show. What should you take away from today's episode? If anything, I'd like you to take away one thing, that it's not a hit or miss situation. It's not a stab in the dark. It's actually a long-term planning situation when it comes to bringing on an associate. What you need to look for is not simply a clone of yourself. You need to look for a very specific set of personality traits, evidence of production, all these things well thought out. You obviously, as a practice owner in either buying the existing practice you've had or in starting a practice from the ground up, did an amazing amount of planning. You probably called a coach or consultant. Many of you are working with me just on the marketing aspect and you put tons of planning and thought into it. And if you put even half of that into hiring the associate and really defining exactly what it is you're looking for. And then don't be hasty to put them in the position and try them out and see how things work out and really feel it out until you find the right person. You will get the ideal associate in there. You will have the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, insert cliche here, scenario, much like the one that Fran said in the best placement that she's ever seen. It can happen to you and it will if you just hang in there and do that. Fran, I want to thank you again for being on. We try to put the listeners in touch with our guests in case they have any specific questions or inquiries or who knows, maybe if somebody's listening in the Northeast, maybe they need some coverage or something like that. So let's start out with the best ways to reach out to you. Okay. Would be my toll-free number, 1-800-367-5707. And Mm -hmm. folks, you heard it right here on the show. You can ask for Fran personally, and you will be able to talk to her. She's she's very cool like that. And then uh, the website, chirocover.com, is it? That's correct. Chirocover.com. Okay. And then I'm just going to ask you for one last thing. What what would be one piece of advice that you would throw out to the practice owners that are listening in terms of if you just have to give them one little bit that they would take away from today that you think would help them, what, what would it be? Keep an open mind. Don't be so stuck in the viewpoint that, for instance, if a guy is looking for a job, he's not that good of a chiropractor because he doesn't have his own practice. That is so not true. There are guys coming out of school that all they want to do for the time being is coverage and associate placement and stuff like that because they're in a learning environment and they want to know before they dive in with both feet, you know, with the expense of opening up their own practice, what they're in for. So be willing to 
have open arms to the new guys. Let's not eat our young alive. Let's give them the opportunity to expand chiropractic and make it the powerful healthcare profession that it should be, you know, recognized and, and admired. So, yeah, that's what I have to say. All right. And you know what? That is, once again, pure gold, Fran. So thank you so much uh, for doing that. And thank you for being here today. I want to just thank you on behalf of the whole audience, because I know they're just sitting there like, wow. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right, great. And to you, my faithful listeners, I wish to extend to you the opportunity to find much more information about all the podcast episodes, our guests, and how to contact our guests and so on on our website. ChiropracticMarketingAdvice.com is the central hub for articles, information, podcast info, tools that you can use, products, and so on that can help you really grow that practice. I know having Fran Faella on the show today helped us make a giant stride forward. When we hit one of those hot topics, I know that we're making progress here for that as well. And I would like to invite you to go into iTunes specifically and give the show a rating and write a review of the show. And of course, if you'd like to get in touch with me personally, you can write me at frank at screeningexperts.com. I love hearing from you, especially feedback on what topics and guests do you like to hear from on the show. I really hope this is helping you grow that practice. So my friends, we've come to the end of another stupendous episode on behalf of myself, my staff, our special guest friend, Faella, and the entire ChiropracticMarketingAdvice.com crew. I thank you so very much for tuning in, and we will see you next time for another awesome episode of Will Work for Patients. So long. Sure to subscribe and share. Will Work for Patients has been brought to you courtesy of Screening Experts, bringing unscripted simplicity to chiropractic marketing complexity. Today's episode, copyright Screening Experts, LLC, musical score composed and arranged by Frank Sardella, ASCAP. For more information, visit ScreeningExperts.com.